Hi, I'm Kristen, and I'm an engineer with National Instruments, and I'm here today to show you some debugging features in test and test management software. Now, in an ideal world, we'd never have to troubleshoot our test code, and we'd all be perfect programmers. However, we know that test code can get complex and sometimes show us unexpected data. So today, I'm here to show you some features in Testan that can help you to speed up the debugging of your test sequences. So the first thing that we'll look at is the output message view. This is a view that allows us to post statements, including Testan variables, that include information on our test sequence at runtime. I can keep track of useful information without having to pause my test sequence. So I'm going to place a statement step that allows me to output a message to this window that keeps track of my sequence failed variable. I'm going to place this statement step just inside our first if statement. At this point in our test sequence, we should only be executing these tests if our power up test has passed and our sequence has not yet failed. So when I report on our sequence failed variable, I should expect to see that that value is false. I'm going to use the output message function to actually create the message that will show up in our output message view. First, I'll include a little bit of text just saying that we assume the sequence failed variable is false because of where we are in our test sequence. And then I'm actually going to obtain a reference to the current test sequence and the sequence failed variable to report on the actual value of that variable. I can even include some information on the category of this message and the severity level. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm not going to select anything to fail at this point because I want to be accurately reporting on that sequence failed variable and make sure that I get into the correct if statement. If I select my output message view, I can see my message has displayed correctly, including the text I included, uh, the expected value of that variable being false, and then my category and my severity. Note that this message will be available to me until I decide to delete it or until I close test and. So let's assume that my sequence failed variable had actually returned true when I expected it to be false. If I want to get a little bit more granular with my debugging, I can take advantage of this next feature. So the watch view allows me to set a watch expression on particular test stand variables. This is somewhat similar to the output message view, except now I can keep track of these variables in real time at runtime. So first, I'm going to set a breakpoint to actually pause my sequence, and then I'll set a watch expression to keep track of our sequence failed variable. Back in test stand, I'm going to go ahead and clear our output message, and then I'll get rid of that statement step that we put in. The first thing that I'm going to do is set my breakpoints so that I can effectively pause my test sequence where I need to. The first breakpoint that I'll set will be at the power-up test, so I can see what that sequence failed variable would be before power up, and then before my if statement, so I can see what that variable is after the power up test has been evaluated. I'll go ahead and execute this. Now, to show how watch expressions can keep track of real time variable values, I'm going to select our power up test to fail. Perfect, so test and paused at my first breakpoint before the power up test executed. In my watch view, I'm going to go ahead and create an expression to watch our sequence failed variable. Now, my power up test hasn't executed, so my sequence has still not failed yet. And we can see this accurately represented by a false value for this expression. If I resume my test sequence, we'll pause again at the next breakpoint just before my if statement. And we can see that that sequence failed variable is actually true now, meaning that we have accurately failed our power up test and consequentially our sequence. I can go ahead and hit resume to complete execution. So at this point, let's say you want to go one level deeper. You want to actually step into your test code that's producing that test and variable value. The next thing that we'll look at in test and is single stepping which allows you to step into the programming environment where the test code was developed. Let's close out this execution and get rid of our old breakpoints. Now, to demonstrate single stepping into our test code, I'm going to place a breakpoint at our CPU test subsequence call. 
This means that when I get to this point in my test sequence, testing is going to pause and allow me to step into this sequence. So let's go ahead and run this. And this time I'm going to let our test sequence run without any failures. Now, just as we expected, we've paused at our CPU test. So the next thing that I'm going to do is step into this sequence. I can see that when I single step into the sequence, I pause just before the execution of the next step. Now, I can choose to step into this particular piece of test code, and my LabVIEW environment is going to open up. Here, I can open the block diagram, and I can actually watch this test code execute. When I'm ready, I can return to test stand and continue single stepping. Now, for a given test step, I can choose to step into the test code, as I just did for my register test, or I can actually step over that test and pause execution at the next test step. When I'm ready to exit the sequence, I can step out of that sequence call and then continue single stepping through my main sequence. If I'm done single stepping altogether, I can just select step out and test in will finish the execution. In this video, we've introduced you to some of the debugging features in TestAnd. These features can significantly reduce the amount of time that you spend debugging your test sequences. To learn more about TestAnd, go to ni.com/testand.